Shalom, I'm the Messianic Rabbi, Zev Porat, and welcome to a special outreach update from Jerusalem, Israel. We're living in exciting and prophetic times. There's never been a generation closer to the second coming of Jesus Yeshua than this generation. We're not setting any dates, but we know that the time is near. We know that the veil is being lifted. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. And Jews in Israel are being saved like never before. There is a revival in Israel. There is a hunger in Israel in the midst of the demonic outpouring, in the midst of what we're seeing happening all over the world. The gospel is going forth. Praise Yeshua. And we are preaching the gospel all through the land of Israel. We're getting very close to the Feast of Trumpets. As believers in Yeshua and Jesus, we understand that the Feast of Trumpets points to the second coming of Jesus Yeshua. With the sound of the trump, we meet the Lord in the air and go home. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. In a flash, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised, imperishable, and will be changed. In Hebrew, at the last trumpet, bashofar acharon, at the last shofar. In English, you read trumpet, but in Hebrew it says shofar, the ram's horn. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of of the archangel, and with the trumpet, once again, the trumpet, the shofar call, the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ, in Yeshua, will rise first. The Lord himself is going to blow the shofar. Hallelujah. Let's give a praise in the house of the Lord. We eagerly wait for that day, as we're getting close to the feast of trumpets, and trumpets are being blown all through the land of Israel, shofars. We are preaching the gospel and asking people, what does this shofar point to? Most Jewish people don't even know that it's pointing to the day of the Lord. They don't speak about it. They don't teach it. When I was raised as an Orthodox Jew and studied in a rabbinic yeshiva, we never spoke about the Lord's day. I didn't know what it was. Joel chapter 2 verse 1. Blow the ram's horn. There we go. The trumpet, the shofar. Horn in Zion. Sound the alarm on the holy mountain. Let all who dwell in the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming. Indeed, it is near. For those under the blood of Yeshua, for those who believe that Yeshua is God, he is the Messiah, he died on the tree on the cross for our sins, he rose on the third day, and by his blood, if we repent and believe, we have full redemption of sins and eternal life. For those under the blood, we eagerly wait for that day. But for those who are not saved, it is a day of trembling. That's why it's so important that the gospel goes forth. We were led to go down to the Kotel area, the Western Wall, the Willing Wall, in Jerusalem to preach the gospel, to preach the message of the shofar, the message of the trumpet, the true feast of trumpets. Not the feast according to religion, but the feast according to the truth. And the truth can only do one thing, and that is set you free. As the Messiah of Israel team were praying, I began to share the gospel, speaking to everybody and asking them, what is the day of the Lord? What is the meaning? of blowing all these shofars right now until the Feast of Trumpets and in the Feast of Trumpets. Why are you blowing the shofars? The answers were incredible. They're unbelievable. Some people were saying, because it brings in the new year. I then asked them, what does it say in the Bible? It's a new year. They answered, it doesn't say. The rabbis say it. I then asked them, who has more authority, the rabbis or God? They said, God. Then you've answered yourself. It's not in the word of God, and therefore it's discredited. This caught the attention of one Orthodox Jew, he came over to me and asked me, what do you mean? This was a divine appointment. He just approached me and asked. I asked him what his name was. He said, Jonathan, Jonathan. I introduced myself. I then told Jonathan, let's walk over to the Kotel area together and discuss this. Jonathan agreed. We walked over together to the Kotel area. I then turned the Bible to the book of Joel, Yoel, chapter 2, verse 1. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm. On the holy hill, let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand. I then asked Yonatan, what is the day of the Lord, and why do people need to tremble? He said, I don't know. I've never seen this Bible verse. I said, then why are you coming to the Kotel area every morning? As he told me that he comes every morning. He says, I come at six o'clock in the morning in order to hear the sound of the trumpet before the feast. I then ask, what does the sound of the trumpet represent? Here's what it represents. It represents worship 
It represents God's voice. It represents warning. All through the Bible, God used the trumpet, the shofar, as a warning. And he's using it right now in his feet to warn the people. Jonathan looked at me and he was puzzled. What do you mean he uses it to warn his people? What do we need to be warned about? I asked him, do you see what's happening in the world? He said, yes. Do you think the world is normal? He said, no. I asked him, do you know why? He said, no. I said, because the time is coming of the end. We don't set any dates, but the time is near. And God is warning us that he's coming back with the sound of a shofar. And those that are ready will go home with him. Those that are not ready will go to a different place. God wants to bless you, but he wants you to hear the real sound of the shofar. Yonatan was getting nervous. He said, I don't want to go to a different place. I want to go to the presence of God. But then he asked me a question. He said, but the rabbis teach that all Jews go to heaven. I said, can you show me a Bible verse where it says that everybody goes to heaven? He said, it's not in the Bible. It's in the Talmud. And then I asked him, are we perfect? He said, no. Are we sinful? He said, yes. So what takes away the wages of sin? He said, we're taught that prayer and tzedakah, giving. I then asked Yonatan, are we perfect? He said, no. I said, who's perfect? He said, God. God made a way for us to become righteous through him. All of us have fallen short of the glory, but through him we become righteous. And the Feast of Trumpets, Yom HaTuah in Hebrew, Day of Blowing, Yom HaTuah, points to his second coming. Jonathan looked at me and said, what do you mean second coming? It was time for the full gospel. I then turned the Bible to Isaiah 53, Micah 5.2, Jeremiah 23, and said, this was fulfilled already by the Messiah who came, who died on the tree on the cross for our sins. He rose on the third day. And by his blood, if you repent and believe, you have full redemption of sins. You become righteous through him because all of us have fallen short of the glory. But through him, we become righteous. And then when you hear that sound of the trumpet, to you, it's not going to be a day of trembling. To you, it's going to be a day of rejoicing. Jonathan was getting nervous. Jonathan asked again, you said that he came. Who came? Once again, it was time for the full gospel. Yeshua, who died on the tree on the cross for your sins, he rose on the third day. And by his blood, if you repent and believe, you have full redemption of sins and eternal life. He said, where does the Bible say that his name is Yeshua? Everywhere, I said. I turned the Bible to Psalm 62, verse 1, and read together with Jonathan in Hebrew. Truly, my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. And in Hebrew, when we read salvation, it says Yeshua. Truly, my soul finds rest in God. My Yeshua comes from him. But he's coming fast, and he's going to blow the trumpet. He's going to blow the shofar. And all those that call on his name, Yeshua, shall be saved. That is the true feast of trumpets. You don't need to hear a hundred shofars blowing with no reason. You need to hear the true shofar. And the truth can only do one thing, and that is set you free. The fact that we met here today is not a coincidence. The word coincidence is not in the word of God. This is a divine appointment. The fact that you come here every day to hear the shofars is not a coincidence because God is calling you to hear the one and true shofar that is going to blow. We're going to meet the Lord in the air and we're going to go home. And until that time, it's a warning to those who don't repent and who don't turn to him. God loves you so much. He doesn't want you or anybody to perish. Jonathan then asked, but this doesn't sound like a Jewish message. I then asked Jonathan, did we not read from the Jewish scriptures? He said, yes. Then there's no more Jewish message than this. Is the word Yeshua in the Jewish Bible? He said, yes. Yeshua, salvation, is for all who repent and believe, for all the nations. Jonathan was puzzled and asked, what does it say for all the nations? There are many Bible verses that show that it's for all nations. I'll show you one, but I want to ask you a question before. He said, what? God's joy is to be in his presence? He said, yes. So when the trumpet blows, when the shofar blows, and we go to be in his presence, that's eternal joy. Would you agree? He said, yes. I said, let's turn our Bible to the book of Tilim, Psalms 117, verses 1 and 2, and read. Praise the Lord, all you nations. You see, it doesn't say only the Jewish people. It says all nations. God came for all nations. Praise the Lord, all who believe and repent and turn to him as the Messiah, as King of kings and Lord of lords, as God. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love toward us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. 
praise the Lord. You see, it says forever, because those who hear the true sound of the shofar are going to be in God's presence forever. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Jonathan said, I can't deny these Bible verses, but I'm scared and it's confusing me. The rabbis teach us that the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Tova, they teach us that that's the new year. I say, God is the only one who's going to decide what the new year is. It has nothing to do with the new year, but it makes us all new. Because you're born again if you hear the sound of the trumpet, the sound of the shofar, the true sound, which is God's voice, God's salvation, Yeshua. According to the Bible, the first month of the year on the biblical calendar starts in the season of Passover, just a few days before Passover. Exodus chapter 12, verse 2. This month is to be for you the first month of the first month of the year. This is not the Feast of Trumpets. God's word never changes. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what the rabbis say. It matters only what the word of God says in context. And God says that the beginning of the year starts in the season of Passover. And one of the reasons that the rabbis teach that the beginning of the year starts in the Feast of Trumpets is because they don't understand what the trumpet represents. So they had to add their own religion to it. But the Bible is clear. The trumpet represents God's voice. It represents worship. It represents a time of God's coming. And it's a warning to the people to repent. Jonathan began to say, I don't want to lose the presence of God, but I'm scared. Can we meet? Praise Yeshua. We'll be meeting Jonathan for follow-ups. We continue to pray for his salvation. We pray that he'll have visitations, that he'll have dreams, that he'll come to know that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah. We're seeing a great awakening here in Israel, as many are opened to hear the gospel. Let's continue to stand together as the one new man, Ephesians 2.15. Work the harvest together, bring the gospel back to Jerusalem, and go home. And for Zion's sake, we will not keep silent. Isaiah 62, verse 1. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. Till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. And we know that the word for salvation in Hebrew is Yeshua, Jesus. Her Yeshua like a blazing torch. And he's coming back with that blazing torch, the fire in his eyes, the lion of the tribe of Judah, to take back everything that the enemy has stolen. And until that time, we will continue to preach the gospel no matter what. We will continue to preach the true shofar, the true trumpet, Yeshua HaMashiach. Until next time, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zeph Porat sending you blessings from Israel in the mighty name of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Ali Yehuda, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the true shofar, the true trumpet, Jesus Yeshua. Amen. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Yeshua, Jesus, is God. Hallelujah. Amen. And together, we will unmask the Chaldean spirit. Straight from the land of Israel and right out of the heart of Messianic Rabbi Zev Parat comes Zev's brand new book, Unmasking the Chaldean Spirit. The subtitle reads, A Messianic Rabbi's Stunning Supernatural Journey to Zion and the Life-Changing Treasures He Uncovered Along the Way. It's being described by readers as explosive, deeply moving, an unbelievable journey, a world of perspective and insight. Dr. Tom Horn, CEO of Skywatch TV and an acclaimed best-selling author says, Zev truly pulls back the mask on the predominant spiritual battle of the last days, and he does it by metaphorically taking you by the hand and placing you right in the middle of the Holy Land. His work is scholarly, thought-provoking, and tantalizing. My name is Carl Gallops. I was blessed to write the foreword to Zev's book. I've read every single page of it, and I assure you it's riveting and eye-opening. Let me warn you, though, don't pick it up thinking you'll read just a handful of pages, then put it down. That'll probably be next to impossible for you to do. Unmasking the Chaldean Spirit, available at fine bookstores everywhere and at the major online bookstores as well. Get your copy now.